It's awesome. Okay. And then what would you think be the most contentious, since we're getting into it already, I love this, the most contentious uh, part about being Reformed or Calvinist? Limited atonement. Sorry, say that one more time. Limited atonement and predestination. People yes. don't like either one. Prede God would never do that. My God would never predestine. Well, let's, I'll tell you what. Let's, I'll go to the Bible. Um, you get the magic marker. You just mark out the verses you don't like because that's, you know, that's where it is. Uh, and limited atonement. Those are the reformed ones that they, they dislike the most, that I, at least in my experience. Okay. And then uh, re recently, if I have to interact with that, I, I see a lot of problems with people coming up with uh, the origin of the Bible. Can you give an account for the Bible? Can you get, yeah. how, what is the mechanism? Like, I, I, I know you've heard this one. What is the mechanism by which outside of, uh, you know, uh -huh. traditional demands, do you get the Bible? What is, yeah. what, what, what would be your step by step to going through that? Well, the ones who ask this usually are Roman Catholics, Eastern Orthodox, varying groups who like to claim that their church is the true church. Their true church gave us the Bible. Well, this is what they claim. And, and that's why that question comes up. Everyone else doesn't ask the question. Well, except a casual curiosity. How do we get the Bible? But it's not a challenge. With the, the others, it is a challenge because they want to submit, in my opinion, it's going to make people a little upset, but they want to submit scripture to their church and their authority. But nevertheless, uh, there's, it, with that in mind, you got to understand the church did not give us the Bible. The church did not do that. The church did not give us the Bible. The Christian church recognized what God had already given to us. When John, for example, wrote his first word in our in Hylagos, N. When he wrote the first word of the gospel, that's inspired. And that is, it's not, the church didn't say, oh, hey, look, we're going to tell you what's inspired. They just said, that is, because it's from John and he was from Christ. And so the church just recognized it. So the church didn't give us the Bible. The church doesn't have the authority to do that. It has the authority to recognize what God has already established as the Bible. And so the Old Testament books, the 39 books in the Old Testament, and there's only 39, uh, was recognized as being true by the Jews. The, the Christian church, if you want to say begin in Acts 2, did not give us the Old Testament. And it did not give us the New Testament. The apostles did, and the amanuensis of the apostles. They gave it to us, and the church recognized. And the verse I'd like to go to for that is John 10, 27, where Jesus says, My sheep hear my voice. And they follow me. We hear the voice of God. And we recognize, yeah, that's that's His word. So that's how it's, it's supposed to work. All right. And then now move us to the other ones you stated that you believe was the most contentious: limited atonement. Can you take yeah. us through that? What is limited atonement? Well, limited atonement is a teaching that Jesus only legally bore the sins of the elect. He never bore the sin of everybody who ever lived. And there's lots, and I, I can run it through if you want, why it makes sense, but I'll do it quickly here. First John 3, 4, sin is lawlessness. So sin is a legal problem because it's lawlessness, but it's not only legal, but it is a legal problem. Jesus said in the cross, to tell us die, it is finished, which is a legal statement that a legal work is completed. It's been found in the bottom of ancient tax receipts. Furthermore, Jesus himself in uh, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name in Matthew 6, 12, he said, forgive us our debts, ophilema, legal debt. And in the parallel of Luke 11, 4, he said, forgive us our sins. So Jesus equated sin with legal debt. Now, <clears throat> legal debts can be transferred. And so our sins were transferred to Christ. He bore our sin in his body on the cross, 1 Peter 2, 24. And furthermore, if you go to Colossians 2, 14, it says he canceled the certificate of debt consisting of decrees, which was hostile to us. He took it out of the way, having nailed it to the cross. The certificate of debt is the Greek word charographon. It only occurs right there. And it means a handwritten IOU of legal indebtedness. Jesus canceled the certificate of debt, the sin debt, at the cross, not when you believe. Not when you get baptized, not when you take sacraments. I'll read the verse or quote it to you again. He, having canceled, Jesus, having canceled the certificate of debt consisting of decrees, which was hostile to us, he took it out of the way, having nailed it to the cross. That's when the sin debt is taken away. He asked the question, did Jesus cancel the sin debt for everyone who ever lived? 
if they say yes, then nobody can go to hell because God cannot send someone to hell for having no sin. They're innocent. If he sent them to hell, then they're accusing God of unrighteousness. So if they say he paid for our sins, he's saying he paid, paid the debt. That's what the Bible says. Some say the penalty. That's another topic. And one of the other verses I could throw in is, um, is 1 Samuel 3.14. 1 Samuel 3, 14, God says, I've sworn to the house of Eli that the iniquities of Eli's house shall not be atoned for by sacrifice or offering forever. So the sins are not atoned for by the blood of Christ. And neither is blasphemy of the Holy Spirit, etc., etc. And also, if it's true that he paid for our sins back then, then he grants that we believe. That's Philippians 1, 29, and he works that we believe in Jesus, John 6, 28, 29. We're born again, not of our own will, John 1, 14. We're caused to be born again, 1 Peter 1, 3. As many as have been appointed to eternal life believed. So we're justified when we believe. Romans 3, 28, Romans 4, 5, Romans 5, 1, Galatians 2, 16, and 2, 21. So we're justified when we believe, and the righteousness of God is imputed to us upon our faith, which God grants to us. So in limited atonement, it's perfect. God elected us in Christ before the foundation of the world, Ephesians 1.4, Ephesians 1.5, he predestined us. Jesus came to save the ones given to him by the Father, John 6, 37 through 40. He says, You're, he says I lay my life down for the sheep, John 10, 11, John 10, 15. And he says, and you are not my sheep to the, to the Jews. And he says that in uh, John 10, 26. So limited atonement makes perfect sense. I went over it quickly, but, you know, quick and slick. Went over it quickly and, um, and stuff like that. I love debating it, love teaching on it. It makes a lot of sense. Yeah, you don't have to be quick or slick here. Honestly, in these interviews, I'll tell you that there's an ulterior purpose too. a lot of debates. You know, I feel like we jump into without defining terms. And then now most of the debate time where we could be moving a lot of progress forward, we waste a lot of time defining terms. Not to say yeah. defining terms is a waste of time, but I'd rather have that. Like, I think there should be a pre-stage to a debate. Absolutely. Like these, So these interviews, are I, I use these kind of, uh, and I think uh, we've done it in the past before, to sort of, hey, this is going to be one of our debaters on the channel. If, if you would like to come back, sir, I would love for you to come back. So this is our debater on the uh, on the channel, and this is exactly what he means when he says that. So that when they come right. into the debate, you can say, you must have not w watched my interview. I explained right. this. This right. is already in recorded for you. You didn't do your homework or something like that. So for sure, take your time. And uh, one thing in here, you, you, you were slick, you went past it real quick, was the difference, I think, a lot of time when I try and explain limited uh, atonement, people get me caught up in that sin versus the penalty of sin distinction that I think always has to be like uh, pointed out. I think, what, what, what would you say the distinction there is? Take your time to go for that. Well, it, you know, sin itself is the actual breaking of the law. He bore our sin in his body on the cross. That's what it says in 1 Peter 2, 24. And he bore our stripes, he took our stripes. You can go to Isaiah 53, 4 through 6. Now, where does it say he bore the penalty? Now, we can look at some various things to talk about that. But if they want to say he bore the penalty, then there's a logical problem for their position. If he bore the penalty for everyone who ever lived, then the penalty is separation from God, Isaiah 59, 2, wages of sin is death, Romans 6, 23. Then how can anybody go to hell? It's, it's just so simple. The questions are so simple. If Jesus paid for the sin of everybody, what does it mean to have a, a, a legal debt paid for? What does it mean to pay for sin? Because if you and I go to a restaurant <clears throat> and I say, dude, man, I'm going to buy, a, buy a, nice, a nice lunch, man. It's going to be a nice lunch. It's on me. I and hold then, you to that. Okay, you're into that, right? And then <laughs> so I, I reach back for my wallet. I go, oh, crud, man, I, I forgot my wallet, right? And you're cool. And you go, okay, I'll pay. And so now I owe you two lunches, right? So, uh, so the thing is, my debt can be transferred. You can pay you can pay it. That's how it works. It was imputed to Christ. Our sin became him. He became sin on our behalf. Second Corinthians 5, 21. He became sin. If he became sin and he paid the debt, if he paid it all. He did everything. You can't go to hell. People say, well, yes, you can. 
Wait a minute, let me get this straight. So you're telling me that Jesus, God in flesh, the creator of the universe, Colossians 1, 15, 16, 17, John 1, 1, 2, 3, the creator of the universe who became one of us, fulfilled the law perfectly, never sinned, 1 Peter 2, 22, and you're telling me that he took all of your sin in your body and, and, and you can still go to hell? Yeah, that's right. Well, what's it based on? Well, on how good I do and what I believe and what I do. It's up to me. It's up to me. It's up to me. It's humanism. Humanism's creeping into the church like oil in, in bad gaskets. It's getting right in there. I, I, you get me going. I could talk about this, but I'm telling you, I'm, I'm trying to be reserved, but yeah. it's hard. I'm just yeah. telling you, it's just they don't make any sense. Their position does not work they need to abandon it and come to the truth that god's the one in control god predestined god elects and he didn't save you or me because of any good thing in you or me that's why i love this saying i'm glad god predestined me from the foundation of the world because if you look at me now he wouldn't pick me i love that it's true All right sorry about the distractions i wild house but yeah don't be afraid to let loose don't uh, on this like i said this is going to be you know You're people. I, I i want people to pause and go through this and write stuff down and and take it through and next after limited atonement what did you say next limited oh predestinate you said predestination election yeah 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 yep. yeah election yeah you look i'm gonna just what i do with people i say look here's an election uh election there's three main words in greek used for to say to choose chosen elect, things like that. And then there's a word church. So I'm going to say the three that are used in, in election uh, language, and then I'm going to say the word church. Eklege, eklektos, eklegamai, ecclesia. We are the called out ones. We are the chosen ones. If anybody thinks that they chose God out of their own wisdom, out of their own, own ability, they're, they're just uninformed and they're self-deceived. They don't believe the word of God. Because if it, you can come to Christ on your own, on your own wisdom and your own sinfulness, then why did Jesus say, you cannot come to me unless it's been granted to you from the Father? No, it's up to me, my ability, my will. Let me tell you something. That's called humanism. Let me tell you about humanism. I, I set people up. I say, look, let me tell you, what's free will? And they go, well, free will this, free will that. And I say, let me offer you a definition. And I'm setting you up. I'm setting you up for a fall with this definition. Can I, can I do this? And they go, okay. Can so I give what? it a try? Can I give you it a give try? Give it a try. I'm going set, to okay. set you up for a fall. You ready? Yeah. So free, right. will, see, free will. Free will <clears throat> is the, uh, the ability of beings to make choices that are congruent with their nature. Okay, you heard me say that already. You're yes, cheating. Yes, I did. Yes, you I slime did. ball. <laughs> yes, I did. <laughs> Yo, oh, you slime. Okay. It's a good well, definition. It's a, it's a good definition. Problem. It's totally a slick definition. It's totally awesome. Now, the reason <coughs> we say that is because of this. I'll set them up and I'll say, is this what free will is? The ability to be able to say there's right, there's wrong, and you can choose right, you can choose wrong. No one's forcing you, and you just choose to do one. That's your freedom to be able to do that, right? That's free will. And people go, yeah, that's free will. I say, really? Well, that's, you're a good humanist because you just decided a universal principle of truth based on your own intuition, your own ideology. You didn't even invoke God in it because God cannot choose between good and evil and accomplish either one. Get only do that which is good. That's why the definition free will is the ability to make choices consistent with your nature. God is holy. And so he chooses holy things, and that's how it is. The unbeliever is a sinner and slave to God who can do no good. He's dead in his trespasses and sins, Ephesians 2, 1. He's by nature a child of wrath, Ephesians 2, 3. He's a slave of sin, Romans 6, 14 through 20. He cannot receive spiritual things, 1 Corinthians 2, 14. It doesn't say he can if he tries hard or if he's sincere or if the human attributes and human qualities are elevated to humanness, me, me, me. If all of that is in place, well, then God will, you know, he'll, he knows my sincere heart. All this is paganism thrust into the Christian scriptures, trying to make it fit what they want. No, that's not how it works. God chose us because of what's in him, not because of what's in us. He chose us because of his free will, not because of ours, because our free will, unbelieving as unbelievers, unregenerate, is enslaved to sin. 
We can't choose contrary to our nature. And if we're slaves of sin, the Bible says you can't. And I won't give references again, but you're a hater of God. Don't seek for God. Can do no good. Uh, dead your trespasses and sins by nature, a child of wrath. A heart desperately wicked and deceitful. How does someone like that believe? They don't. That's why the Bible says, as many as had been appointed to eternal life believed, Acts 13, 48. And it says in John 1, 13, it says, you're born not of the will of the flesh, nor the will of man, but of God. I mean, it's right there. And then you can go to Romans 8, 29. Oh, people love Romans 8, 29. Oh, yeah. Those of you foreknew, he also predestined. Matt, don't you get it? God looked in the future to see what's going to happen. He knew their choices, and he went with them. I say, well, first of all, that denies total depravity. Second of all, to say he looked into the future to see what's going to happen means God had to learn. God doesn't learn. There's some issues there. Furthermore, it says those whom he foreknew, he also predestined. Those whom he foreknew, he also predestined. They're the same group. Only the foreknown ones are the saved ones. 